So today we are going to magnetize some materials and we have kind of a nice setup here to do this and what we're going to do is try to understand something called hysteresis. So let's go have a look at our notes. So if I have some material, uh, what is this material? But it's of course a lot of atoms inside it. Uh, they have magnetic moments that are pointing in different directions. And now if I apply a magnetic field, which we call B applied, to this material, then these atoms will tend to align with this field. Now, here they've slightly aligned, but now when I put on a really strong field, we see that the material has aligned in the direction of the field. So this material has become magnetic. Now, if we reduce the applied magnetic field back down to zero here, uh, there will still be some residual magnetism in this, in this material, and some materials will stay magnetized even though we've turned the magnetic field off. But if we then apply an uh, applied magnetic field in the opposite direction, then it will start to flip these atoms in the direction of this field. And of course, if we keep increasing this magnetic field, we can align everything in that direction. So we can kind of flip these over, but there's a little bit of a lag. A lag meaning that when we apply a magnetic field, it takes some amount of time before the magnetic field inside the material on the y-axis is increased to its maximum value. Then, when we decrease this mag applied magnetic field, it drops slightly down here in some cases, or in some cases there's no hysteresis, but in, in the case where there's something called hysteresis, we see that um, there's still a remnant field even when B applied is at zero. There's some magnetic field that's left over. So now what we can do is kind of keep flipping these, this applied field and see what happens to the magnetic field in the material. And we come up with a curve that looks like this. So when we're at our maximum applied field, we're at our maximum field inside the material, we decrease B applied, we keep decreasing it, and finally it reverses the magnetic field in the material, it gets to a maximum value, and we can do the same in the opposite direction, and we keep basically producing this. This difference here, the size of this, uh, this area, the space in the middle, is what we refer to as this hysteresis, where we have the material as being magnetic, even though there's no applied magnetic field. Um, the applied magnetic field is zero here, but we see that there's leftover remnant field. So this effect is called hysteresis, and let's see if we can test it out ourselves with our experimental setup. So here we are with our setup and this kind of apparatus. Let me just explain what's happening here. So we have a magnetic field um, here that can be flipped. And this magnetic field can be flipped because we have a coil around it and we're basically running uh, alternating current through this, uh, through this magnetic field here. So we can basically switch the direction of this current and basically switch the direction of this applied external field across this magnet. Now, this here, this is a little... Um, uh, cylinder here, which we can put materials inside of, and there's a coil around this that measures the magnetic field inside this cylinder. So when there's a magnetic field in the cylinder, it, um, it, uh, we can measure the, the current produced by this, and we basically can kind of calculate what this magnetic field is. So we can put different materials inside here, and, and then uh, basically quickly flip this electric, this magnetic field and see what happens to the magnetic field inside. And on this uh, plot here that we see behind us, we can uh, plot this out and look at this hysteresis. 
So let's start with this material here. This is a piece of iron. And I stick my iron in here. And I... Uh, get our hysteresis curve. So here what we see is very quickly at something like uh, 50 times a second um, We're swapping the magnetic field here and we're basically seeing um, a repetition of this this hysteresis that's happening many times a second. So this is iron. Now let's look at some other materials uh, This is hardened steel Okay, so hardened steel, uh, we see kind of a slightly different shape, but we still see this, uh, this hysteresis. This is now um, nickel, okay, some nickel, and it has kind of a tiny amount of uh, remnant field in here. We see, we're kind of looking at, at the zero in the middle and seeing that there's just a small gap. This is nickel. Um, this is something called ferrite. And let's have a look at ferrite. So ferrite, we see that we are able to magnetize it, but there is no leftover remnant field, at least not, nothing observable on here. So there's no hysteresis in this. Um, and finally, let's look at stainless steel. Okay, so I have some stainless steel here. And Stainless steel doesn't even magnetize, okay? We see that, um, you know, it looks like, you see that the yellow line is tilting, but if I take this thing out, it still tilts. So Stainless steel doesn't even magnetize. So there you have it. Uh, this is uh, this effect called hysteresis, where we get a leftover magnetic field after we've magnetized something. And we can kind of go through a cycle where we keep magnetizing it in different directions to, to learn about this. So anyway, it's not magic, it's uh, physics. And I'll see you next time. Well, thanks for watching. It looks like I survived today. Um, but if you want to find out if I survive the next experiment, then um, remember to click like, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.